Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. First of all, I hope everybody had a happy and safe Thanksgiving. We definitely had a good one over in the Moran household, but it is Friday and time to do some rehousings and of course make some videos about it. So for this one here, we're gonna be looking at Serotogyrus marshalli or the straight horn baboon. One, one of the species that's really kind of crept up on me is one of my favorites. I got two Serotogyrus darlingi females that I absolutely adore. Picked this one up a few years ago and I'm loving this one just as well. But anyway, Serotogyrus marshalli or the straight horn baboon is an old world tarantula species that hails from Zimbabwe or Mozambique. Although fossorial, these guys will do quite a bit of webbing on the surface if given some space. And as far as temperament's concerned, they can be fast, but they're usually very shy, like to hide in their burrows, whether it be dirt burrows or web burrows. And many folks will recommend them as a first old world species to folks who are looking to keep old worlds for the first time. So Enough of me talking, let's take a look at my Serotogyrus marshalli or straight horn baboon. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Serotogyrus marshalli or straight horned baboon. They get the name because they have what's called a foveal horn on the back of their carapaces. It looks like a little horn, it's a little protuberance. But anyway, this one here I got back in April of 2020, a buddy of mine gave me, it was like a half inch sling, and it was in one of these containers here, which I don't normally don't normally use. I see them a lot when we go to the convention, the last two conventions we've been to, or uh, expos, a lot of people keep their slings of those. I have one in it now that I'm gonna be rehousing soon. But at that time, it was only about a half an inch or so. So basically what it did, this is usually a burrowing species, so it burrowed all the way around, it webbed all the way up top, and it wasn't long before it really outgrew this enclosure. So then the next thing we put it into is this one over here which is one of the M Design kitchen pantry storage containers. I get these off of Amazon. Just know that some of the models have a gap beneath the hinges here. And what I usually do is put a piece of tape on the inside that keeps anything small from escaping. But I love these guys. Now, I mentioned this in the last video we did with these guys, and I'll show some rehousing footage as I talk about it. But there is a another size that is actually an inch taller, I believe. It's like this one's four inches, the other one's about five inches. That would have been a better fit for this species, knowing that it was gonna do some digging and there was gonna do some webbing. But unfortunately, Amazon was out of them at the time, and I didn't have any that weren't occupied by something else. So I did use the smaller one. So if I did this again, I would definitely put it in the taller ones. I use the taller ones for anything that does a lot of webbing or a lot of burrowing. And then now it is time to rehouse it. I caught this one out. She molted about three weeks ago and I caught her out and about. She's probably looks to be about four, four and a half inches long or so, which is way too big for this one, four and a half inches across. So what we're gonna put her in is this over here, which is one of the primal cage enclosures. It measures eight inches by eight inches by 12 inches or 20.3 by 20.3 by 30.5 centimeters. I love these and I did talk to Corey, who's the one that runs it. He took a little break while he was setting up a new warehouse. He is coming back next year. He's got some awesome new enclosure designs. So I'm very excited to try some of those out because I really like the ones I bought. I think I have six of these and I keep a lot of my medium species in. They're just gorgeous. And if you like the magnetic top, I mean, there's a lot of companies out there making the magnetic top ones. They're definitely worth checking out, but unfortunately he's not currently selling them. So you can't check them out right now, but when he's back, I'll let everybody know. But what we got in here is a cork bark, a piece of cork bark, some plants uh, glued to it. I've got a starter burrow where I took the back of a paintbrush, put it down there, put a nice little starter burrow. I've also been including multiple hides for my spiders. So I've noticed some of them, when you give them two hides, will start in this area here. It makes them feel a little more comfortable and then they burrow. Now, what she will probably do is burrow down. I'm expecting her to bring a lot of substrate up. And remember when setting up an enclosure for a fossorial species, they're going to remove a lot of dirt from down here and it's gonna get deposited up top. So you wanna make sure you don't stack it up too high. I've done this before where you fill it all the way up to here, the spider brings the dirt up and all of a sudden it's right up to the top of the enclosure. You don't want that. The other thing is I'm guessing once she starts getting comfortable, she's gonna start webbing out and about here. So you wanna leave some room up top for the webbing. With this one here, with this rehousing we're about to do, I'm thinking I do wanna get some shots of the spider. So I'm gonna to try to get her out so Billy can see her. But what I'm gonna end up doing is probably pulling out the webbing and putting it in here for her to start with. We just rehoused my Neoholotheli Incy and we dropped the webbing in, and I noticed right away she went and started connecting the webbing to the new place, created a starter burrow, and ate almost immediately. So sometimes if you can take that old webbing, drop it in, in a place where it looks nice, they'll just use that and continue webbing from there. So we'll stop talking for a minute. I'm gonna put this somewhere I can find it, and we're gonna try to get this one out. What's up? We just make sure the flash is on, so. Oh, we're gonna make sure the flash Thank is on. Oh, the other thing about these is they don't secure. So usually what I use is a little piece of tape. 
And I always have my backup piece of tape. I haven't had any issues. The other thing you can do with them, as I've done with the larger versions of them, is I put two shelves together so that you put two on top of each other. They slide in. It keeps the tops down. Something to think about. You can also buy the acrylic cement by acrylic hasps and put those on there if you want. I mean, I have a lot of them that I use, so I just haven't spent the time doing it, but definitely an option. Oh, there, well, we can get a little feet. I'm gonna try to get her to come out. Uh, we're gonna use Simply Limeade. Simply Limeade might be a little bit big, but. Please just come out, there we go. Please don't attack my brush. Oh, there she is, looking gorgeous. I was hoping we would get some shots of her. She's very secretive. And the, this one's grown a little more slowly than my Serotogyrus darlingi. That's the rear horn baboon name because that foveal hoof goes, uh, foveal horn goes backwards. These guys, it kind of goes more straight up, as you can see there. I love the, I love the horn species, just the coolest thing. But this one's grown much more slowly because, again, she's pushing, what, two and a half years old now or so? And probably, I'm going to say probably a, a good four inches or so. Is that about right? We'll go four inches. So now we got to figure out how to get, don't go back down there. No, don't go, no, 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 no. I'm going to use the, <laughs> I did, I feel bad. This is the only time I ever get shots of them though. I'm not a big proponent of taking them out and posing them and causing more stress than you need to. I know some folks will take them out and they'll get them on a walkabout and get some good footage. For me, it's more important to get it from point A to point B, but I also know that people are watching these videos because they've picked up slings. They want to see what they're going to look like. And we're going to get that right in here. Here you go. And you're going to go right up into this. And it's going to be amazing. Everybody's going to marvel at the fact that you're not going to try to attack me. <laughs> no? Well, she's a little spunky today. There you go. No, right up in there. Right up in there. There you go. Perfect. So there she is up there. A little spunky. So I think what we're going to do before we do anything... I'm gonna take some of this out. We're gonna get this new enclosure in here. And I'm gonna take this webbing out. There's one of her water dishes. Now, while I'm doing this, one of the things I like to point out is a lot of people will see the Ceratogyrus species and they'll learn that they are supposedly arid species, which as juveniles, adults, yes, they can deal with arid conditions, but I have noticed the slings do appreciate some moisture, so I do not keep the slings bone dry. I will usually give them, like when I started on this one, I kept the bottom levels moist, and she did burrow right down to it, so that's usually a good indication that they like a little bit of moisture when they're younger. Now, as she's gotten older, what I will do is moisten down a corner so she doesn't seem to care, and I keep having to pluck out water dishes because she covers them with webbing. There's some cork bark in here. Ooh. Fun with webbing. Let's spread some of this out. I'll probably take this out of here. And this will just, they do, I do have a theory, and I've talked to other people, and we've kind of seen it, that they will recognize their own webbing. Or, Does she not hair? No, that's an old world species. Oh, gotcha, no. okay. She'll bite you. Oh, no, you were touching her webbing and usually... Oh, yeah, good good call. Yes, if this was something, uh, a New World species that had the urticating bristles on her, I would not stick my fingers in here because they would be itching like crazy, but this is not a New World species. I'll put some webs over here. So this hopefully, we'll put a little bit of this down in here. This will hopefully allow her to settle in a little more quickly. And I have noticed what will happen is like with the HNC, we kind of had a similar arrangement where we took her old thing out, we dropped it in, and she just immediately started webbing over here, burrowing, and she's got a nice little tunnel of webbing now. Oops. I just realized I'm whistling, and it's probably going right through people's ears. I'm seeing this. <laughs> On that. Oh, look at her legs. They're so cute. Yeah, so I'm going to try to get her down into. Eh. Boom. And she actually went under this one. So this gives her. It's something I've talked about with other keepers. And I think what happens is 
the cork bark isn't cheap and you go to set up an enclosure and we all do the same thing. We, we take our one piece of cork bark, we put it in there, we build a nice hide and that basically gives the spider one alternative as far as where it wants to go. Something like this, I've noticed sometimes they'll pick one over here, sometimes they'll pick one over here. I've started doing something where I kind of stack some cork bark up and it's always amazing to me to figure out where they actually end up setting up when they start to burrow and start the web. So this one will go under here. What I'm guessing will happen is she'll settle down a little bit. She'll start coming out here. We'll do some webbing. I'm guessing at some point she's gonna end up in that one there because it's gonna be nice and deep. She can start burrowing. And then hopefully she webs up the top of it. I'll turn this around, I don't think. Unfortunately, I think the rest of the video, we're not gonna see shots of her, but that's okay because she's happy. So this one's four inches or so. I believe they get about five, five inches. In that case, if that's how big she gets, this is great for the medium-sized tarantulas. She'll have enough room. She'll be able to burrow. She'll be able to web. I think she'll be fine in there as an adult. If you want to give them something bigger, that would certainly work as well. As far as temperatures are concerned, my temperatures are always right around the summertime now because we did move to the new house. It's a little warmer, so usually about high 70s to mid 80s during the summer. During the winter time, it gets a little chillier in here, so most shelves are right around 73 degrees. It'll dip sometimes on super cold days. The, the heat won't be able to keep up for a bit, and the temperatures will dip down into the 60s for a couple hours or so, and then it usually makes its way right back up, so there's never any issue there. And she's grown just fine through both sets of temperatures. Again, with moisture, we mentioned that slings do not keep them bone dry, do not keep them wet. The trick is to use a pipette or a syringe if you're using, say, well, we'll use a little teeny dram vial here, but say this is a bigger dram vial, what I like to do is dribble some water down the side, squirt some water down the side, so the bottom will stay moist, but leave the top dry. You don't want to overdo it with the moisture, but you do want to give them a choice. And then eating, they have all, this one's always eaten great. I remember when it was a little teeny half inch sling dropping some little red runner roaches in there and having her burst out and grab them. I love watching them hunt. And she's ate great ever since. I fed her actually two days ago and I fed her twice since her last molt. She's grabbing right now medium. One of them was a large cricket, no problem there. So normal size prey items. And then as far as what to feed them, feed them what works for you. I personally like crickets because everything eats crickets. I also like red runner roaches, the what is it, B lateralis roaches. Turkish red roaches. Those were great. Everything seems to go at them, but you can also use dubia. Just know with dubia, you want to crush the heads because generally if you don't, they will burrow and hide and you'll find them like months later, much bigger dubia. Same thing with mealworms or superworms. Crush the heads first. They'll eat those as well. I think that about covers it for this one. I have somebody that asks all the time for updates on the Seymour Shali. So hopefully if you're out there, you're seeing this and it's what you were waiting for, but Serotogyrus marshali the straight horn baboon, awesome little species. Love the Ceratogyrus species. I actually have two sea darlingies. They've become huge favorites of mine. I think when I did my old world, favorite old world videos, they were on there. If it wasn't, they should have been. So C. Marshali. So again, these are wonderful little spiders. They eat great, they grow fairly quickly, although mine's grown a little more on the slow side. And once again, a lot of folks will recommend them to people who are looking to keep their first old world species. No, the good thing about old world is, is most of the species, especially the fossorial ones, if you give them the room to dig and to web that they need, you're not gonna have many interactions with them. You're not gonna have to worry about putting up with any of that legendary defensive temperament. The trick is to just make sure you give them that room. And then, slings. The one thing I do want to mention again, because it bears repeating, is the fact that although you will read these are an arid species, and yes, I can keep the adults a little more dry, the juveniles and slings will definitely appreciate a little bit of moisture. You don't want to overdo it, but you want to make sure that they at least have a little moist substrate on the bottom so they can dig to it if they need it, and if space permits, give them a water dish. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle up in there. If you want to check out the other video with Ceratogyrus marshalli, I'll put it down here, and we'll put probably best for viewer up in here. As always, you take the time to comment. I will take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days. Guys, again, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving, and we'll catch you all next time.